If you want to make millions in the crypto markets, you have to do two things. First is you have to understand the market flows. Once you master the market flows, the second step is choosing the right altcoins. In today's video, I'm going to explain how to select and find these different 100X, 1000X gems, whatever you wanna call them. I'm gonna show you guys my step-by-step -step process as well as the different tools that I use so you guys can implement them in your research. This will allow you to select your own coins. And if you guys are sitting here scrolling on Twitter looking for the coins, I'm telling you right now, that is not the place to do it. At best, you may get like a two or three X. And then for the most part, those tokens either go to zero or they underperform Bitcoin and ETH. Because by the time you see them on Twitter, that's usually a top signal. Especially if you see it on the news or on TV, like, oh, this new coin called WIF. It's going on the sphere. That's usually a local top. Sure, it may continue to go up from there, but most of the gains are already made. So choosing the right coins, you can easily make a 20X or more, and sometimes even up to a 1000X, depending on how early you are. Before we get into those tools, let's cover how these market cycles work. Everything follows Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to be your first mover for the crypto market. As the liquidity first comes in, or anyone who hears about crypto, the very first coin or project they usually hear about is Bitcoin. And now that we have the Bitcoin ETF, that is how people get exposure to the crypto markets. However, once money flows start to realize like, oh man, Bitcoin's already gone up like 10X, 20X, etc., money will start to look for other places to go. It's not rocket science, but when someone sees something that does like 100X, they're like, oh, well, it's probably over. So they start looking for something else. That's why people look at penny stocks because they think it's early because it's a low price or even meme coins in the crypto markets. But money will then flow into Ethereum because they're like, okay, I missed Bitcoin. Now let's focus on ETH. But eventually the Ethereum market gets saturated with the market cap and people are like, okay, most of the gains are made. And this is when people trickle into the large caps and the altcoins seeking after higher gains than what Bitcoin and ETH will provide. This is how the money flows work. And then usually after the alt season and large cap season is over, this usually rotates back into Bitcoin or some stable coins and we rerun the cycle all over again. Obviously, once it hits into a bear market, most of this stuff really doesn't matter at that point. In fact, it runs in reverse to where everything flows into Bitcoin, but that's outside of the fact. Whether you are a new crypto enjoyer or you've been around for a really long time, there are two rules in this market. Rule number one, stack more Bitcoin and ETH. Rule number two, follow rule number one. Do not bag hold these garbage altcoins and whatever coins you want to call them. They're good in a bull, but in a bear market, they get absolutely roasted. The only thing people care about that point in time are either Bitcoin, ETH, and stable coins. And to show you what this looks like, Phantom ended up doing a 1821X from its low. Um, yeah, 1821X, which is basically over 180,000% gain. Basically, if you threw $100 at this, at its lowest point, you'd have over $180,000. Same thing applies to something like Avalanche. Avalanche didn't make as big of numbers as Phantom did, but I just want to explain to you guys the altcoin curve. AVAX ended up doing about a 72X, actually a little bit more from its lows, depending on when you got in, but something that you reasonably got in around 2020, around $2, and ended up doing a 72X. Now, if you go even down further the risk curve, you can make even more exponential gains depending on the chain that it's on. Let's say you missed Avalanche, or let's say you missed the Phantom rotation where they just giga pumped, and you're like, snap, I missed it. Well, you had a couple of opportunities. On Avalanche, you had a token called Joe. This, easily, anyone could have gotten into this. Me personally, I got into it. I absolutely roasted myself because I threw it in an LP pool and had in permanent loss. If you don't know what it is, I'm not gonna explain it in this video. TLDR is like, it ended up doing like a, a hundred and astronomical X and I got like no X's because 
it all sold into Avalanche. And if you're over on Phantom, if you bought Spirit after missing Phantom, this actually was an airdrop. This one ended up doing over a 1700%. Um, so basically this was a free 1700X. So like actually it's infinite returns. So these returns are even better than a Phantom. And it's actually relatively easy to find something like this if you know what to look for. But before we get into those tools, guys, and show you guys how to find these different things, if you guys are new to Drake on Digital, I talk all things crypto, DeFi, NFTs, you name it. If that's your cup of tea, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, tell me where you guys are watching this video from. And I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today. This is BTC Machine and their Zbit token. These guys are launching a MMORPG game on Bitcoin. You guys can test it out and check it out here. And they are also launching a massive airdrop. They're doing 112,777 inscriptions. They are going to be topping up RuneStone. RuneStones were also a massive airdrop. They ended up airdropping about three or $4,000 in Bitcoin to people who simply just had a couple of inscriptions in your wallet. So if you are a early ordinals enjoyer, you have a RuneStone in your wallet and soon to have some airdrops from the BTC machines. So before picking your different 100X gem or altcoin, you need to create this story. Narratives drive the markets. It's not really so much fundamentals. I mean, let me give you the best example. GameStop stock. That was not fundamentally driven. That was more of a meme and a story. Let's get back at the hedge funds and the traders that are basically shorting more than the stock in existence. Like, how is this not illegal? So that was the whole story behind it. It's like, let's get back at the big guys. So sending the GME stock to the moon, this basically caused a bunch of hedge funds to almost go bust and it causes Robinhood to even close down his trading. Like, that's how crazy it went. But GameStop, wasn't valued at that valuation. It was just something that had a narrative. And the same goes for something like Bitcoin. It's worth over a trillion dollars, not because of the technology that it is. Like you can literally create a whole nother network that does something similar, but it doesn't have the adoption and it doesn't have the story. It's all about the narrative and the story behind it and the community that develops. Narrative drives the market. Well, Actually, the price does, but the price creates the narrative that drives the markets. Now, after you have this story, you need to find the catalyst. There are a couple of catalysts that you can look at. You can look at airdrops, developer activity, on-chain incentives, the teams, the investors, the UI, the UX, the on-ramps, the news, events, different things around this that could be considered a catalyst. Simple example of Bitcoin doing extremely well going to the happening is because the narrative is that the block rewards are going down. Block rewards go down, the supply becomes more scarce, thus the price pumps. Or like Ethereum, you have EIP-1559, the tokenomics are now deflationary. Well, that's bullish for Ethereum. Or you have a upcoming NVIDIA conference, this would be bullish for AI tokens. These are different catalysts you want to look for that can formulate around a particular project or token that fuels this narrative. So you have the narrative, you have the story, now you look for that catalyst. And once you have that catalyst, you can start picking some of the different coins to look for. When you are doing this, you need to understand what you are looking for. If you're expecting a DeFi protocol or some niche project on some chain to be hundreds of billions of dollars, those are really just some foolish expectations. Now, if you expect a layer one to reach a hundred billion dollars, it's highly likely. It already happened previous bull run, so it's likely to find another layer one to do the same. Hence why you have a chart that looks like this on Phantom. Phantom ended up doing 180,000 X from its lows. It's because that's a layer one. You had the catalyst of being a really cheap, fast, chain you had andre pumping it he was the father of DeFi. you had daniel sesta pumping it you basically had a huge story and a huge narrative around this chain thus creating the exponential price action and the same goes for avalanche with the three ac boys basically like this is the next best thing since sliced bread or even like luna 
These are all different stories and narratives that the community develops behind and it creates this exponential price action. Now to find these coins, I like to use a mix of different tools. The very first one is CoinGecko. CoinGecko, once you go under, obviously on the main page, you can go under categories. This will give you a list of different categories you're looking for. So if you are looking at the layer ones, cause you're like, okay, I have a thesis that this is going to be something that is extremely popular. This is bull run because it was also popular last bull run with Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche, Solana, et cetera. So that would be a considerable thesis. Then you need to create the different catalysts. What are the on-chain incentives? Who's funding them? Who's behind them, et cetera. But let's just say we want to choose the different layer ones. You can select different ones based on this as well. Like if you're like, hey, I'm bullish on memes. I wanna find some different memes or I'm bullish on liquid staking tokens. You can go through all this or even like DPEN. There's different categories for every single thing. So you need to create the narrative. And obviously when you're playing around with these crypto things, you want to have them across different narratives that you're bullish on. Don't just throw it all at one narrative. I've learned that the hard way you get absolutely roasted and you, uh, yeah, it, you, you had to have a lot of respect the pump moments while you're just sitting idle. But basically you can go to these layer ones and see all the different chains here. You can filter based on the 24 hour volume, market cap, etc. If you're looking for those like 1000 X gems or 100 X gems, you may be able to find some on here, but it's highly unlikely. Like, especially if it's in the billion dollar market cap, like multiple billions, it's probably not very likely. Just using Ethereum and Bitcoin as a barometer. However, if you scroll down, you can find some lower, like Canto, for example. This is only a $159 million market cap, or you have Alephium, or you even have Moon River. You can look into these and see what the possibility is on these. Now, it's not just like, hey, look, it's a $100 million market cap. I better ape all my money at it. You need to look into the stats and understand this stuff. These are probably going to be the 100X to 1000, nah, I wouldn't call it 1000X gems, but maybe like 100X to 200Xs are going to be on the layer ones. Obviously, if you get some like dirt cheap, it could do extremely well, but that is just something to set in your mind. So since I'm focusing on the layer ones, I'm gonna use a tool called DeFi Llama. This will tell me what's going on on that particular chain. This will tell me if there is liquidity coming into there or if it's a dead chain. Usually when there's TVL coming on chain and there's more and more growth, that me that usually means there is a lot of developer activity and incentives or they are doing something right. But when you go on DeFi Llama, you can simply select any of the different chains. So for example, we are choosing Solana. This will actually give you a couple of tools that you can filter based on. So if I want to see the on-chain volume, I can see here, this is definitely picking up. Something's happening, something's popping. They're doing something right here. You can also see in the blue, the TVL is basically going exponential. Sure, it's not what it was at its previous all-time high, but something is going on over here. You can also see the stablecoin flows. This is a huge sign of health. The reason stablecoins are important to look at is because meme coins and these other altcoins, they can just like go up in price exponentially, but it's not actual liquidity because sometimes the actual market cap of the meme could be like $100 billion, but there's only like a million dollars in liquidity. So it's not actually there. Whereas with stable coins, the liquidity is there. To have $1 in USDC, that's $1 in liquidity going into the chain. So this is a really good measurement right here. Whereas the others, like if you're just simply going based on TVL, this could be denominated in SOL or denominated in some other tokens. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, you can also scroll down and take a look at some of these other protocols on here. These are usually where you're going to make the exponential gains, depending on the project you are on. And each of these different protocols will give you their own stats and information on each of them. And sometimes these protocols are tokenless and interacting and using them can actually qualify you for airdrops which, hey, you can't beat that. And again, that's another catalyst. 
The reason why Solana is doing extremely well is it has several tokenless protocols. So while you're researching these coins, you should start to formulate your own thesis and your own catalyst for these different chains. Like Solana, most of the tokens are in circulation. It's not going to be a dumpster fire and it's got a lot of tokenless protocols with airdrops. Once they give airdrops, where's that money gonna go? It typically stays on chain and reinvests into the ecosystem. These are different things I'm thinking of. The UI UX is great. It's cheap, it's fast, it's easy to use. Those are things that I'm looking for. So let's take an example of Marinade. This is a project on Solana. If I take a click and look on DeFi Llama, this will also break down the Marinade token as well as the stats for the protocol itself. You can see the fees that it's generating, the revenue. These are different things that you can look for if you're trying to place a valuation on a particular token. You can also use something like Token Terminal. Token Terminal will also give you these stats as well. So if it's trading at a $1.5 billion valuation and it's earning like, I don't know, a million dollars per year, is that a likely valuation? Well, not really. Uh, that it would probably be rather inflated. So those are different things you want to look for. And you can also use a comparison tool, which is like, okay, a liquid staking token on Solana. Well, let's compare this to Lido. So you can simply go to Lido and see its stats over there and see how it compares. This is basically how you'd be comparing these different valuations between these tokens. But again, these are in the multi-billions and market cap. And being that these aren't really layer ones, these are not ones that I would be looking for the 100X or 1000X gains. These may do something, but they are going to piggyback off the success of Solana for Marinade and Lido Finance for Ethereum. Now, if you aren't a statsy person or you don't like to go by stats, that's okay. There are a couple of other resources that you guys can use for this. Some of them include going into the project Discord slash telegrams, some of the native social dApps like Stars Arena or Farcaster. Stars Arena is a decentralized social platform. Think of it like decentralized Twitter. Farcaster is also a decentralized Twitter. Stars Arena was for Avalanche and Farcaster is for Basechain. So you can go on to those different social networks and you can look for different tokens and projects that people are talking about. You can also join some crypto alpha groups. You can listen to some founder interviews for that particular chain, or you can go into the project Twitter slash discord spaces. You can get some really good alpha in there because a lot of times in those spaces, they spill a lot of things that are coming. They say, Hey, these are the, they don't say catalysts, but they give different big things that are coming. Those are catalysts. And sometimes they even talk about some of the native projects and they have some interviews with the native projects. But since I'm trying to target the tokens with the highest upside or the ones that have a greater chance of reaching multiple billions and billions of market cap, I'm going to focus on the layer ones because this has already been proven as a trade in the past and it's already being proven as a trade in this bull run with Solana reaching its exponential gains and you even have other newer chains like Sui and Aptos doing really well. I wanna go ahead and analyze Sui so you guys can see what's up with this so you guys can understand the thought process behind this. The current market cap is a $2 billion, but the FTV is $16 billion. At a $16 billion valuation, it seems like, hey, this can't pump as much as it can. Well, it really depends. You want to look at the float of the supply. A really good tool to use for this is token unlocks. If most of the supply doesn't hit the market till a year from now to hit that FTV or two years from now, it's kind of a meme. The reason it's a meme is because as money comes into the market and they try to buy different coins, if that supply is not on the market and there's a ton of demand on it, well, it's classic supply and demand. The less supply there is, the more demand there is, the price pumps. So you can use a tool like this to find different entries if there is a massive token unlock coming up or when you need to sell right before a token unlock. Sometimes the unlocks are bullish like we saw with Solana and it ended up gig ascending from like $4 to at its peak and its bull run like 250 bucks. But using Sui as an example, let's go ahead and analyze it. You can see here the growth is basically going exponent. I wouldn't say it's exponential, 
but it's climbing really hard. And if you look at all the protocols that they have, there are not that many, but they are all tokenless or just about 90% of them are tokenless. What this tells me is the TVL is growing. People are farming. People are playing over here. You can kind of see these stable coins at one point. It kind of just went exponential and you can see that it's starting to take another uptick. This could possibly be a good turnaround point for Sui. If you see here, it kind of climbed really high and then it kind of started consolidating around these levels. It's really a $2 billion market cap. And looking at some of the other uh, tokens out there, like Solana, for example, trading at a $80 billion market cap, if Solana continues to go, and if Sui does have strong growth similar to Solana, it's likely to see Sui in the multiple tens of billions of dollars. So if you look at that valuation, that could be like a 20, 30, 40X from here. So if you're looking at that and you're like, okay, well, that's... That's a possibility, but I kind of want the 100X or 1000X. Then you have to go a little bit further down the risk curve and you have to look at the different token list protocols or the ones with tokens. These are all, or most of these are tokenless. So what you're going to have to do with something like this is you are going to have to interact with them and farm the token. These are where you're going to get the exponential Xs. You don't have to pay for the token. And if the token does 100x, it's technically, technically infinite because you paid nothing for the token. You're just interacting with some dApps and using some time and farming and earning with some of the capital. But for me, the story of Sui has to do with a couple of things. The first is the investors behind it. They have Andreessen Horowitz or A16Z. They had Coinbase Ventured, Standard Crypto, Redpoint, Lightspeed. They had some pretty big names investing in this. And these guys invested over $336 million at a $2 billion valuation. Sure, it's now about a $13 billion FDV, but these are some of the biggest names in crypto. I mean, stinking jump crypto. These guys bailed out wormhole for almost a billion dollars when there was a exploit like they just said oh look we'll fill the void these guys when they put their name behind something they make sure it's good so if they're investing in something and putting their name behind it it's in their incentive to pump the chain not only do they get to sell at a higher valuation but their name is behind it and they want to have a clean and a good name so this is catalyst number one Catalyst number two has to do with the liquidity incentives. 117 million SUI tokens are going to be used to incentivize developer activity and user growth. Hence why you saw the TVL growing. But when you see that, it's like, okay, if developers are getting paid, it's likely this is going to create more and more developers to come over. And eventually, if you throw enough computer geeks in a room, they will make something. So that's why developer activity is usually something good to look for. That's why Ethereum is doing extremely well. The third catalyst has to go with the super fast, cheap chain. It's a parallelized chain. I probably said that wrong. Basically, transactions are able to run parallel to each other. So instead of just having like, hey, this transaction goes first, then this one, then this one, they're actually able to run at the same time. So think of it like a store with 100 registers instead of one register. So it's just faster, quicker, better UI, better UX, and they actually created their own chain. So think of it like uh, Solana to where it's they have their own Rust based chain. Sui is move based. So it's a whole new coding language and it creates its own moat for its chain itself, but it's an extremely fast, cheap, and it's a good UI UX. And lastly, there are a bunch of tokenless protocols. So if you have tokenless protocols, on-chain incentives, this means money coming in, basically paying people to use the chain. This creates this flywheel that we look for. So think of it like a bunch of people in a casino with pockets full of cash and they can't leave. Eventually they're going to use it on the chain. So this is when you go through the different protocols on SUI, and these are going to be where you find your 100X to 1000X gems. A lot of these are tokenless. So again, the best way to get these are going to be via farming the token itself. But in summary, that was kind of putting together a thesis and a story for you guys. But of course, you need to analyze the risks. The risks are Bitcoin and ETH nuke and the market's all nuke or that the chain doesn't get adopted as fast as it should. 
what's the upside, what's the downside. So these are different things that I already took into consideration. Looking at the upside, it's like, okay, at a $2 billion circulating market cap and looking at Solana's, for example, around $86 billion, super fast, cheap chain. It's not rust, it's move, parallel, new narrative. Okay, there's a possibility that it can continue to do well from here. Once that does well, this drops down into the other altcoins. Now, what's the downside? Well, the downside is it doesn't get adoption and it simply goes to zero. So those are different things I have to consider and keep into mind. Also notice how I put the TAM in there, the total addressable market. Looking at the layer ones and layer twos as an example, it's really easy to find a TAM for this because you have other things to compare to. However, if you go with something more niche, it may not be as easy. Next, I also analyze the teams and are they capable, who's behind it. I analyze the different people investing in it. I talked about A16Z, Jump. These are big names. They're putting their name on this project. They're going to push it. They want it to do well because their name is on it and they also want to make money. The team is definitely capable. They created their own blockchain. It's a move based blockchain. They created their own coding language for it. Dudes at Miston Labs, it's the guys behind Sui. This isn't their first time. This is something that they've been doing for a long time. So the team is definitely more than capable and they also have the on-chain incentives to incentivize more developers to build on Sui. So that's just some of the things that I develop and formulate a thesis for. And those are some of the different tools that you can use to develop and formulate your own thesis. Again, it doesn't have to be super complicated. Sometimes it could just be super simple. Look for something that has a really good story, a really good narrative. Remember, stories and narratives sell. And sometimes you just don't even need to overthink it. An example is Phantom. Like just, okay, well, trading at 20 cents and it used to be at $3. It's easily a comeback trade, not financial advice, of course. Now, if you just look on any dead chart, it doesn't work like that. You need to make sure there is good developer activity. Like Phantom, they're going to be having a airdrop. They got the Sonic upgrade. They got Andre over there. These guys are still building. There are a bunch of catalysts for this, and it even fits in the parallel execution little narrative. It's actually infinite parallelization. So it takes it to the next level and stinking less than a $3 billion market cap. And most of the supply and circulation to me, at least I look at it like a no brainer, but uh, again, I'm kind of like a phantom maxi. Speaking of which let's go and give you an example of being able to find those 1000, 2000 X gems like on phantom. The best way to do this is outside of the discords and telegrams is going on to the native dexes and looking for these different tokens. Once you see these different tokens here, you figure out what they're all about. Like what is F bomb? Well, you can go learn about it. You can go to their website. You can go into the equalizer discord. This is the name of this dex and you can learn about it. This is where you need to do your research. If you aren't willing to put in the time and effort to go into that, then this is probably not for you. You'd probably be okay with getting like a 10X. But this is something that you want to do. You have to be willing to grind. But if you don't have the time and ability to grind, I do share this information in my Discord and I do research this stuff every single day. So if that's something you guys want to be a part of and see what I'm doing in the markets, you guys can check out the links to the Discord in the description below. And you can basically see what I'm doing in the markets. I have a full spreadsheet of the different protocols to airdrop farm, the different tokens I'm in, the different meme coins, the different nodes to set up, a list of all the different jazz. And of course you can chat with a bunch of other DeFi DGENs just like you. And guys, lastly, point number eight, make sure you guys take profits. Like at the end of the day, if you don't take profits, you didn't win anything. Everything goes down in a bear. And if you don't take profits, you're going to round trip your bags. Now I know guys, that was a really long video, but you can go back through, play through it. And you guys can look at the different tools and analytics that I use in order to conduct my research. This will work for you as well. It worked for me, but you got to be willing to put in the work. You got to be willing to grind. And I hope the examples I gave help to explain the thought processes behind this and what to look for. If you are newer to crypto, this comes with time. So it may seem overwhelming at first, but as you're going through this, doing your research, things will start to make sense. You will start to study and understand the culture of crypto. You will learn new terms. You will understand new teams. You will understand new investment funds. Once you start 
learning these different Lego blocks, you'll be able to build this Lego house. So take it one step at a time. Don't be overwhelmed. Just play with some of these tools one step at a time and get your feet wet. Don't be just like spoon fed by that YouTuber who's just dumping on your head. These are the different tools that you guys need to learn and understand how to find these different projects. Watching YouTube and Twitter or scrolling through Twitter is not going to cut it. You're like, it's not. You're going to get absolutely roasted. Now, I actually do want to give you guys another example of this besides just Sui. The next one has to do with base. I get it. Base doesn't have a token, but it has a killer story and a killer narrative. And it has some tokens that are absolutely popping off. Aerodrome is a really good farm, by the way, but that is a good example to use. I'll get into Aerodrome as well. That'll be part of the thesis. Don't worry. First things first, though, on base, let's structure it like this. Coinbase, base chain. Coinbase is a massive company. When people think crypto, retail thinks crypto, they think Coinbase. Coinbase is already a public company. They have a lot of investors in them. When people are coming into crypto and coming into new projects, the first place is Coinbase. They have this thing called base chain now. So people on Coinbase are directly offboarded and pushed into base chain. So if people are trying to withdraw, instead of going to like Binance chain, Ethereum, or Phantom, this is a direct catalyst for base chain because people are basically being shoved over there and pushed into there and encouraged to go that way. They even have on-chain quests for retail to use to learn about this thing we call DeFi especially if they don't understand it or don't want to. If they're getting paid to try it and test it, they will like it and they will get paid for doing it and they will realize, oh man, I actually do kind of like this stuff. Like once you try DeFi, you never go back. Um, so that is the other catalyst for it. The next is that it's probably going to have a airdrop. People are saying there's not going to be an airdrop. People are saying there is. It's highly likely there is going to be an airdrop. And once there is an airdrop, that will just create a situation to where it's like extra money on chain. Retail, Coinbase off ramp. If you remember Binance Smart Chain, Binance Smart Chain was one of the top performers as a chain last bull run because Binance was basically pushing people onto that chain. This is a huge catalyst for base chain. You have liquidity coming in directly to Coinbase and push directly over. No other chain, well, there are other chains, but a normal chain, like let's just say Sui, for example, doesn't have a direct off-ramp. Solana did extremely well last bull run because the direct off-ramp was basically FTX. Sam was invested in Solana, so he was like, let's just push people over to Solana. That's why Solana got its claim to fame. Or if you take, for example, last bull run, Binance Smart Chain, it got its claim to fame because of Binance basically shoving people over. I see the same happening for Base Chain. Now to look for some of these coins, you can use DeFi Llama, the other tools that are shown, and you can also go to the liquidity hub or the water cooler of the chain. This is a 3-3 DEX. It happens to also be the number one TVL on base chain, but you can go here and scroll through and look for some coins. Like if you don't recognize something, go research it. Type in the ticker on Twitter. Twitter is a great research tool, but it's not a great scrolling tool. When you're scrolling through that retail feed, that's top signal stuff. But if you're typing in like tickers, using it for research, that is a great tool. Well, let's take, for example, Well in the Moonwell token. This is a lending protocol on base. So if you go over to Well and you simply just type in W-E-L-L, -L, and if you simply got in early on this or realized you can farm it, you would be up bigly, like, you know, the way Trump says it. This thing is already at three cents, but where did it come from? You could have basically just farmed this token for free and like for months, you could have just lent out some Bitcoin and ETH and got this for free. You would be up right now as we speak, infinite returns because you, you just can't calculate it. You're farming it for free. But if you simply bought it here, you'd be up like a 10X. Now you're probably like, well, that's not much. It's still only a 51K cap. Let me give you another example. How about Aero, Aerodrome? You simply could have just farmed this token and you didn't have to do anything. Like you, you could have just farmed it. And actually, if you were on Velodrome, this was a airdrop to you. This is a $276 million FTV now. So kind of putting things into expectation. But Aerodrome, in the bear market, I guess you can say, when everyone was farming it, this thing was two cents. 
It's now 79 cents. So don't tell me you can't make a 100X or 1000X. It exists. It's there. You just have to keep your head up. Here's another example. This is Degen. All you had to do was simply be active and engaged in the bull run. Degen, yes, it's a meme coin. I get it. This is currently at a $75 million market cap. But if you use Farcaster, it's a social app and you were on there early, you got this airdrop to you. The airdrop is currently worth over $40,000. Let that sink in. Over $40,000. It's literally just a airdrop given to you. Or you simply just could have picked it up on the secondary at 0.001 and it's now 0.006. Like, come on. Like, what, what are the returns on that? That is astronomical. It's a, actually more than that. We're, we'll just call it a, a 2200% return. Is that enough for you? How about we just go to Phantom? Let's give this as an example. This is actually not a, yeah, 3.4 million is actually correct. Uh, it's actually a little bit less than that. This is Equalizer. I love Equalizer. Equalizer is my jams. This is basically a 3-3 dex on Phantom. All you had to do was be farming this thing at 50 cents. It's now at 13 cents. Or, I'm sorry, $13. Uh, yeah, you were all you had to do was farm this thing. It went as low as 50 cents. You could have just picked some up down there if you wanted. You're up a 26x. Anyways, guys, um, the opportunities are out there. You have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to grind. You have to look for these different projects and these different tokens. Get off Twitter. Get off like whatever social feed you're watching. Like the best you can do on those things is like a 2X or like a negative X and underperform Bitcoin and ETH. They are out there. Just go look. Not financial advice, but be willing to get your hands dirty and get your feet wet, whatever you want to call it. Proverbs chapter 18 verses 7. The mouth of fools are their undoing, and their lips are a snare to their very lives. Be good, be righteous, peace.